Hello, welcome to Andrew Fixes. Today I'm doing some work on this 2015 Nissan Leaf and I thought I'd bring you along. So when I say work, I'm doing a few things. I'm doing front brake discs and pads. I'm also trying to fix the clicky axle problem that this car has and then I'm going to do a brake fluid change as well. This video is about the discs and pads but have a look out for the other videos where we'll go through the clicky axle and the brake fluid. So with Nissan Leafs, you see an awful lot of posts, I see an awful lot of posts anyway, in forums, websites, etc., saying it's only done 20,000 miles, 30,000 miles. The mechanic's telling me it needs new discs and pads. They've got to be pulling my leg. Well, sometimes they probably are, but sometimes they're probably not. And this is one of those cases where they're probably not. So this car has fallen victim to the classic problem with Nissan Leafs regarding front discs and pads. Because of the regenerative braking, the front brake discs and pads, or the front brakes let's say, don't actually do a great deal of work quite a lot of the time. Contrast that with an internal combustion engine car where the front brakes apply the majority of the braking force to, to stopping the car. But in an electric vehicle like this, the regenerative braking does most of that and what commonly happens including I suspect at Nissan main dealers is that when they service the car they have a look at the brakes and then they put the wheel back on and that's it and they comment on whether they're worn or not and they comment on how many miles they've got left but what they don't do is take the pads out clean up all the rust and muck brake dust that's stopping the pads from sliding freely and by not doing that the pads get stuck in the pad carrier and so they're not pressed evenly against the disc and so the disc starts to rust and eventually you get into a situation where the contact area on the brake disc has got lower and lower and lower because of all the rust and then it becomes a bit of a safety issue and the car needs new brake discs and pads. And that's what's happened on this car. This car's done 25,000 miles. I've already had a look at the front pads. There's loads of life left in them, but the discs are in a very sorry state and I'm not really happy to carry on just, just leaving it as it is. This car, before it came into our ownership, had a full Nissan service history. So working outside today, slightly different from usual. My Ford Ranger has had some gearbox trouble and so that is blocking the entrance to the garage. It doesn't have a gearbox in it at the moment so it ain't going anywhere. The car's jacked up and it's on axle stands. Easier said than done that in my situation. Although I've got a low profile jack, the jacking point, the central jacking point on the leaf is so far underneath that if I get my jack into it, I can't actually then pump the jack up so what I do is drive the car onto some concrete blocks like that and that just lifts it up enough to then be able to get the jack underneath so 21 millimeter for the wheel nuts as with an awful lot of Japanese fare It's harvesting season at the moment, so there are a lot of tractors going past. Okay, so the wheel's off. Obviously, next thing to do is to take the caliper off. using a screwdriver there to back off the piston a little bit so that the caliper comes off more easily. So 19 mil for the back and 14 
hang that out of the way. These are 19s and they are tight. take the pads and the carrier off as a complete unit. We'll come back to that later. Hmm. I was expecting that to pull straight off. A little bit of encouragement. There we go. Right. Look at the state of that. So basically we've lost nearly 50%, not quite, of the, of the sort of efficient braking surface. I mean the brake pads are still pressing against this, but it won't do such a good job. And if we look at the pads in a minute, we'll see that the pads have been worn away by, by, uh, by this surface. Okay, so now we've taken the old disc off, we can start getting things ready to put back together. Starting with giving this a good old clean up, you can get some quite nice um, power tools to do this. But I don't have them. So the extra exercise of wire brushing will be just fine for me. We're doing this because we want a completely flat, smooth, clean surface for our shiny new brake disc to go on. And you can see the brake cleaners evaporating away pretty fast today. It's a lovely warm day. So I'm using Techstar brake discs. Not a brand I always use, but I do use them quite often. The reason why I chose these, not necessarily the Techstar, but this particular version of them, um, aside from having had good experiences with them before, is that they've got uh, an anti-corrosion coating on so that the non-swept parts of the disc stay relatively rust free so aside from just looking nicer it also means you don't get so much of the corrosion that led to me having to hammer that brake disc off the hub Put that on there just to feel like we've done something although it's just going to hang there fairly loosely for now until we it won't be held tight until we actually put the wheel back on right onto the pad carrier this is quite an important bit for the brake job because we need to leave it in a state where the pads can slide freely in these mounting points these are the old pads 
can see dual pattern of wear there, one half where it's been on the disc, the nice bit of disc, and one where it's been on the rust. These pads have two backing plates on them. Probably leave them on actually until I'm ready to put the new ones uh, in. So these pads have also got a little cheeky little spring there which helps them retract and that is at the top. So if you think about it as the wheel is spinning and it's going to be spinning that way, this retracts the pad at the leading edge of the pad. So the bit that the disc is going to come into contact with first, so it lifts that away first. Uh, so you've got to make sure you get those right when you put them back. Anyway, more of that in a bit. So the pad hardware pulls out like that. They're both the same. Really important to clean inside so behind where the hardware goes, because you can get water and stuff accumulating there. And then that can cause rust, which can actually push the hardware inwards, so squeezing the pad. And that makes it more difficult for the pads to slide. That's that. Then we do the hardware. bit tricky to get on the spring side because it doesn't want to let your brush slide backwards and forwards. You just press the spring back and do as best you can. really any need to get the whole of it clean unless you particularly want to, just the bits that matter. Of course you can fit brand new hardware if you want and there is a school of thought to say that you should be doing that every time you change discs and pads. And I, I, uh, I kind of know what is meant by that, but um, I'll fess up, I don't always do it. I've had pretty good results so far, but you know, up to you.
Right, we're nearly done, but the final thing to check is that these slide in and out freely. These ones do. If yours don't, you need to pull that rubber boot back. You can see it's just starting to come back there. Take the pin all the way out, clean it up really, really, really well, and silicone or rubber grease in there. Never copper grease, never brake pad grease, just silicone rubber grease. But by the same token, if they slide perfectly well, I think you actually have more chance of introducing contamination in there by taking them apart and cleaning them uh, than by just leaving them alone. So they are going to be left alone. So before putting the hardware back in the pad carrier, I put a little bit of lubricant behind. The lubricant I'm using at the moment is um, some Febby Bilstein brake pad paste, ceramic paste. Um, this is probably a bit overkill for a leaf, more for uh, sort of high performance cars where the brakes are going to get super hot and melt all the lubricant and it's going to wash away. Um, but I'm, I'm just going through a phase of trying different brake lubricants, such is the excitement of the life I lead. Um, and this is the one I'm using at the moment. I quite like it, don't seem to use very, need very much, a little bit goes quite a long way, so a tiny bit. Just putting this behind where the hardware is going to go now. Strictly speaking, this isn't a sliding surface, so you could maybe get away with some normal grease, I don't know. That's that. May as well get the pads ready while we're at it. I'm using Blueprint. These are Febby Bilstein um, Blueprint pads. Not my absolute favourite, but they were uh, the right price. And they're not that bad, actually. Uh, I'd usually use Techstar, Pagid, Mintex, um, Jurid sometimes, that sort of thing. One of these on the other side had one of these little clips bent, so just make sure it's straight before you put it back. Now these come with one backing plate, but as we know, the pads have two, so this is where it was a good idea to leave the old pads assembled, because now we can see that that pad is the one that goes next to the piston. Backing plates are slightly different shape, but that's okay. Let's give it a little bit of a clean up. And I tend to put a tiny bit of this on the backing plate. two reasons. Firstly, it can sometimes help with reducing squealing and secondly, helps disrupt somewhat the formation of corrosion. So that's one. Okay, that's it for the bench section. We can take all our bits and pieces back outside now and start putting it back together. Okay, now we can put the pad carrier back on.
These are torqued to 165 newton meters, so pretty tight. The sun is lovely, but it makes videoing stuff like this very, very difficult. Hopefully, the lighting is about right so you can actually see. So, a tiny bit more lubricant. Usually put these in at the bottom first. Now as you're putting them in at the top, gotta to make sure that that little spring goes underneath. And push them in like that and they'll want to come out at the top. So just make sure that they stay in place just enough. You may find it a good idea to use a wheel nut with a washer or a bigger bolt as a sleeve just to hold these in place so that you don't have what I'm currently dealing with. Or you may decide you'll just deal with it. So retract the piston. I'm using one of the old brake pads here as you can probably tell. Not ideal to be pressing against that bolt, but it shouldn't need much force to retract these. See that's going back quite nicely there. That's probably about enough. We haven't got far to go because these pads aren't actually that worn. So we're not actually adding a whole great deal of new material when we are fitting these new pads compared to what was there before. Okay, while we're here then, before we do this last bit, just clean up these surfaces and do this surface very carefully because you don't want to put your wire brush through the rubber seal, but just gently cleaning up these surfaces. Just checking it fits before I apply the lubricant.
These are torqued to 27 newton meters. Just going to press the brake a few times to seat everything. Okay, final stage. Let's put the wheel back on. Okay, so I've shown you one side, it's time to do the same on the other side and then that's your front brake discs and pads changed. While you're doing this job, you may want to change the brake fluid. Have a look out for my video on doing that on the leaf as well. Just say a little bit about what to do if your discs and pads aren't quite as bad as the ones on this car, so if you manage to catch them in time. The vast majority of the content in this video still applies. You'll be using your old discs or rotors, so before you take them off, make sure that you mark the orientation that they were in so that you can put them back in the same orientation to minimize any judder or any unevenness problems uh, when you put them back on. You'll still need to clean the mating surfaces of the disc before you put it back on. Moving on to the pads then, if you're putting your original pads back in, before you lubricate the pad ears, so the bits at the end of the pads, you need to give them a good clean with a wire brush make sure you've got all the loose rust and clag off there before lubricating the pads and putting them back in. Also worthwhile taking the backing plates off, cleaning those because you can occasionally get corrosion buildup in those, so it's worth taking those off, cleaning them, putting a thin coating of lubricant on there to reduce the chance of further corrosion happening and then putting them back together. So having done the brakes, always a good idea to take the car for a test drive just to make sure that the brakes still work and they work as expected. One thing to note is that if you are putting new discs and pads on, as I have, you won't get full braking efficiency straight away because the discs and pads need to bed in. Manufacturers usually advise a period of time, I, I can't remember how much it is, but they, they need a little bit of time, a little bit of distance to bed in and they advise that you don't really go for it with your braking during that period, so gentle braking generally where possible to help that process. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Any questions or comments pop them in the comments section down below. If you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps spur me on to create new content for you. I've got quite a few other videos on the leaf already on the channel and also coming up so look out for those. All that remains to say is thanks for watching, see you next time, bye!